Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Kraft Cheese Company, who also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night, present each week at this time Harold Perry of the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Evans. And now let's visit our friend, the Great Gildersleeve, as he prepares to have breakfast this morning with his niece and nephew, Marjorie and Leroy. Good morning, Marjorie, my dear. Hello. Good morning, Leroy. Happy George Washington's birthday, Unc. If what? Oh, yes, of course. Today's the 22nd. Same to you, Leroy. Say, Bertie picked something special for breakfast just because it's a holiday, Uncle Mort, so be sure and notice it. Oh, you can't help noticing her special fixes, Marjorie. You weren't here for dinner on St. Valentine's Day, but she served the liver in the shape of a heart. <laughs> Yeah, and on Lincoln's birthday, she piled the bacon and toast up like a log cabin. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but she takes such pains to make everything look so appropriate. I think she's coming now. Oh, yes. Morning, everybody. Oh, well, 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 good morning, Bertie. What's this? No prunes for breakfast? No, sir. I cannot tell a lie. Them's cherries. Oh, well, I see. <laughs> I suppose you'll bring in little hatchets to break the eggs. <laughs> no, sir, this morning we have an Lexington omelet. A Lexington omelet? What's mm-hmm. that? It's the kind you don't put on the fire till you see the whites of their eggs. <laughs> it's a sort of revolutionary dish. Oh, yeah. Well, sounds very good for the Constitution. <laughs> Do you get it? Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Here's your napkin. Oh, how nice. A red napkin for Leroy, a white one for Uncle Mort, and a blue one for me. Gee, buddy, you certainly got the spirit of 76 today. I bet you baked the cake in the shape of Mount Vernon. No, I don't seem to be able to do that, so I made a Baltimore cake. If why Baltimore, Bertie? Because that's the closest I could get to Washington. That's not good, and I don't see how I take all them things to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's too bad we aren't going to have a tea party today. You could fix a Boston cream pie for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miss Gildersleeve, now you have fun with me. Oh, no. Now, you both go ahead, and I'll be right back with the cooked oats a la Paul Revere. <laughs> yes, Paul Revere. Yeah. Jeepers, I hope she don't come out riding a horse with a powdered wig. Yeah. Sam, do you know what Paul Revere said when he finished his ride? No, what did he say? Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's corny, but everybody bites. Yeah. Oh, stop, Leroy. I think it's terribly nice of Brady to do all these things. Yes, Leroy. I, I don't know of a better way of digesting your history than eating it. Oh, that reminds me. Did you go down and see the dentist yesterday about your loose tooth, Leroy? Well, did you, young man? Who, me? Well, seeing I'm not talking to myself and Marjorie isn't a young man named Leroy, yes, I meant you. Oh, I see. Well, did you? Did I what, Uncle Clark Morton? Did you see the dentist yesterday? The dentist? Oh, you mean Dr. Cotton? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I saw him. Well, what'd he say? He said hello. You? <laughs> I knew he'd say hello. What did he say should be done about your tooth? Oh, uh, he, he said absolutely nothing. Uh, that's strange. I thought it was ready to be pulled. Leroy, are you sure that young man, where are you going? Oh, I thought I'd go for a walk. Before you've eaten breakfast. Come back here, Leroy. Now tell me, did you go to Dr. Cotton's office yesterday? Who, me? Let's not go through that routine again. <laughs> Now, did you or didn't you? Well, uh, I I guess I didn't. But, Leroy, you said you did, and he said there was absolutely nothing to be done. I did not. Uncle Mort asked me if I saw him. Well, I did, on the street, and he said hello to me. And I never said that he said there was absolutely nothing to be done. Unc said, what else did he say? And I said, absolutely nothing. And that's just what he did. He said absolutely nothing. (laughs) Now, see here, Leroy. (laughs) You stop trying to deceive me. That was just as bad as telling a deliberate falsehood. And on George Washington's birthday, too. He wouldn't have done a thing like that. No. Really, Leroy, I don't know where you pick up such bad habits. Goodness knows, I've tried hard enough to set you a good example. Well, how about last week when you told the cashier at the movies I wasn't 12 yet, so you'd only have to pay a dime? Yes, oh, well. Well, that was, uh, I mean, uh, sometimes even I need to be reminded. I'll remember that, Unc. Yes, all right. And also remember that it always pays to tell the truth. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve, but there's a gentleman here to see you. Oh, uh, a gentleman? 
Well, not exactly a gentleman. It's a policeman. A yeah, policeman? <laughs> I can't imagine what in the world one of those dumb flat feet was. Well, hello, officer. What can I do for you? <laughs> Excuse me for disturbing your breakfast, but do you know who owns that car that's been parked in front of your house all night? Uh, the car in front of this house? Uh, well, no, I can't imagine. You mean out there? Why, Uncle Mort, that's yours. Uh, it is? Oh, well, thank you for telling me, my boy. Yeah, I guess it's mine, officer. Don't you know it's against the law to leave a car parked in the streets all night, mister? Oh, I know. I never heard of such a law. But Uncle George, yes. uh, I mean Uncle Morris, huh? uh, only last week you warned me about leaving the car out. Oh, did I, Marjorie? Uh-huh. <laughs> Bye, George. Uh, George. <laughs> That's right, my dear. <laughs> it just slipped my mind, officer. I won't forget it again. I'll say you won't, not after you pay a fine in traffic court. If... Just so you won't forget to show up, here's the summons. Goodbye. Oh, yeah. Well, what are we talking about? You were saying it always pays to tell the truth. Oh, yes. Now, furthermore, Leroy... Yes, Leroy? Mr. Finch is here. Oh, yes. Come right in, Oscar. I hurried as fast as I could, Mr. Gildersleeve. Did you bring all the books? Good. Set them down right here on the desk. <sighs> there we are. You know, ever since you called me, I've been wondering why you want the Forrester Estate accounts brought here on Sunday. It's Judge Hooker. He runs a probate court, and I have to account to him for Leroy and Marjorie's estate. And so he likes to snap the whip every so often. Oh, yes. I've met the judge. He's quite a whippersnapper. Uh, yes. <laughs> Oscar, he found out about the estate taking over Quiggs' drugstore... He phoned a little while ago that he's coming over to question me about it. Oh, now I see why you wanted the books. Say, how did we do during the last month? Uh, Leroy, let me handle this. Uh, how did we do, Oscar? Oh, much better. We only lost $213. Oh. Is that considered good? Oh, that's a decided improvement over the month before, when we lost $378. Oh, yeah. If this keeps up, maybe we'll get out of the red and be in the pink. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I wish we never got mixed up with that drugstore. It's getting to be such a headache, it'll soon start to break even just from the aspirin I buy there. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I, I hate to say I told you so. Yeah, well, then don't. It's a profit, you're a total loss. I never wanted to operate that cut-rate medicine market in the first place, and you know that. Say, Uncle Mort, how did we get into the pharmacy business, anyhow? Uh, well, uh, the estate owns the building, Leroy. We rented the store to Mr. Quiggs. But he spent more time trying to train his cat to do tricks than he did taking care of his business. Finally, the cat got so good and business got so bad that he took the cat to Hollywood for a career and we took the drugstore for the rent. <laughs> Gee, does that mean I can have all the banana splits I want? It does not, young man. You think banana splits grow on trees? I have to account to Judge Hooker for every penny. Well, I thought you were the executioner of our estate, Unc. It, it's executor, Leroy. An executioner is a man who kills off... Oh, that's what Judge Hooker will accuse me of doing. Now, don't you worry, Mr. Gildersleeve. The profits you made for the rest of the estate are far greater than any loss incurred at the drugstore. Yes, but that won't satisfy old Droop Snoot. Droop Snoot? Well, little pet name I have for Judge Hooker, Leroy. Skip it. Well, it's a good thing you're here, Oscar. You can explain everything to him. Oh, I, I don't think I'd be of any help, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, no, why not? Oh, the judge doesn't like me very much. So if he's coming, I'd better go. Wait a minute. What's wrong between you and Judge Hooker? Well, when he ran for re-election last time, it just so happened that I was president of the Get the Hook for Hooker Club. Well, goodbye. Oh. All right, Gildersleeve. Now, out with it. What's a big pill like you doing in the drugstore business? Well, it's like this, Hooker. Uh, uh, Leroy, uh, don't you want to run along outside while I talk to the judge? No, let the boy stay. After all, this concerns him, too. Sit down, Leroy. Uh, Thanks, Judge. Say, Unc, can I call him by your pet name? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, quiet, Leroy. <laughs> yes, and don't interrupt, my boy. This is just the same as a court hearing. A uh, court hearing? It, it is? Raise your right hand, Unc. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you? Sit down, Leroy. <laughs> Now, look here, Judge. Can't we do this some other time? No, I'm too busy these days. Even have to work on George Washington's birthday. Well, speak up, Gildersleeve. Well, it's like this, Hooker, old pal. A now, business... cut out the old pal business, Gildersleeve. This is official. Oh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, the estate had a wonderful chance to pick up uh, this business for practically nothing. I see. Was it in good shape when you took it over? Well, it was a going concern. Uh, but, Uncle Mort, would George have said that? Uh, George? What George? Oh, yes, that George. If I get you, Leroy, 
Well, uh, to be frank, Judge, it had been a going concern, but by the time we got it, it had went. Well, how did you happen to take it over in the first place? Well, it was this way. Uh, it's Leroy, are you sure you don't want to go out for a walk or something? Cheapers, no, I don't want to go out for a walk or anything. I figure I'll have more fun here. Yeah, so I'm figuring too. Well, Your Honor, we, uh, we were dragged into this affair by a trained cat. What did he do, sell it to you? Yep. No, he didn't sell it to me, you little know. You little know what, Gildersleeve? Oh, you little know what I was going to say, Judge. <laughs> now, get going. Come on, get going. Yes, all right, Judge. If the former owner of this pharmacy... Uh, I mean, the, the former owner of this pharmacy... <laughs> if, if the former owner of this pharmacy neglected his business and fell so far back in his rent that one day we found ourselves in the bicarbonate of ice cream soda business. <laughs> well, how's it been doing? Oh, business is a good deal better now than at first. Yeah, Uncle Mort, tell the judge how much more money you didn't lose this month than you did last. What's this? Losing money? Uh, you have no business risking the estate's funds like this, Gildersleeve? I want you to get rid of that place at once, or I'm going to get rid of you as executor faster than that. Do it quickly, Gildersleeve. Goodbye. Gee, Uncle, this looks serious. Yes, you don't realize how serious it is, Leroy. I've been trying to sell that place for months, but I can't get a decent offer. Why not? Because right now, pharmacies are a drug on the market. We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again in just a moment. Meantime, I think you'll all agree it's always mighty helpful to have a good reputation. Well, that's certainly true of parquet margarine, the delicious margarine made by Kraft. Lots of people first tried parquet margarine because it's made by Kraft. And just about everybody knows Kraft's reputation for wholesome, fine-tasting foods. You see, people figure that since Miracle Whip and the other Kraft products are outstandingly good, parquet margarine must be mighty good, too. But what makes people keep right on using parquet margarine is its delicious, appetizing flavor that makes it taste so good. Spread on bread or toast or rolls. Yes, and that goes for cooking, too. Parquet margarine is a real flavor shortening for baking. And you like it for pan frying because it doesn't spatter or stick to the pan. And remember, parquet margarine is a wholesome, nourishing energy food. And besides that, every pound of parquet contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. So why not find out how good margarine can be by trying delicious parquet margarine tomorrow? Remember... Ask for Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet, made by Kraft. Now back to the great Gildersleeve. It's Monday morning, and Uncle Mort is no closer to finding a buyer for the drugstore than he was yesterday. Oh, good morning, Uncle. Have a nice rest? I had no rest, my dear. I tossed and turned like a scow in a storm. And I finally dropped off to sleep at about 6 o'clock and had a nasty nightmare in Technicolor. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Yes. All I can remember about it was that Judge Hooker was crossing the Delaware to buy a trained cat at a Hollywood drugstore, and I was doing the rowing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you take things too much to heart, Uncle. Yeah. Now forget about business for a while and relax. I wish I could, but I'm all strung up like a zither. Maybe today I can get a deal started for that high-priced, cut-rate drugstore. If I could get the judge off my neck and Leroy out of my graying hair. <laughs> What's Leroy got to do with it, Uncle? Well, you remember that Washington's birthday lecture about truth I gave him yesterday? Oh, yes. Well, he's appointed himself my personal censor. Oh. It's rather inconvenient when you're discussing business. And if I'm to get rid of that prescription parlor, well, sometimes it's going to be necessary to... Uh... Morning, Marjorie. Uh... Morning, Uncle Moore. What are we going to do today? Leroy, I don't know what I'm going to do, but you're going to school, aren't you? Oh, no, today's a holiday, too. No school on Monday when Washington's birthday falls on Sunday. Hooray! Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Leroy, why don't you go to a nice movie today, huh? Several movies. I'll give you the price. Oh, no, I want to go down to the drugstore with you. I figured out a way to save a lot of money. How, Leroy? Well, I can work there after school on Saturdays as a soda jerker. I bet I'd make a swell banana splitter. <laughs> I could sell a lot of bananas. No, Leroy. We're trying to sell the whole thing at once. Not one banana at a time. <laughs> you better go to the movies if you know what's good for me. <laughs> but, Uncle Lord, why don't you get the city drug company to buy it? Uh, they own most all the other drug stores in town. Yeah, that's just it. They're too darn independent. 
I went to see the manager, and he said he'd take it up with the board of directors. You know, a big business brush-off. But, Uncle, don't you know? The city drug company is owned by the Summerfield Investment Corporation, and that's controlled by Mrs. Salisbury Twitchell. Twitchell? I thought that old greyhound owned the bus line. <laughs> Also, the Twitchell Steam Laundry, the Merchant's National Bank, and four or five apartment houses. Well, I'd underestimated Mrs. Twitchell. Gee, are you going to sell her the drugstore, Unc? I don't underestimate her that much, Leroy. <laughs> but somebody sold her all those other things. Uh, yeah. Yes, they did, Uncle. Oh, I know. She'll be over at Red Cross headquarters this morning. Why don't you drive me down now and just sort of casually get into conversation with her? Uh, I don't think it'll do any good. Oh, go on. You've got a way with the ladies, Uncle. Yeah, if I have, then she's no lady. <laughs> I've just met her three times, and we already hate each other as if we'd been friends all our lives. Oh, but it won't do any harm to try. Huh? Besides, I need a ride down there. Yeah, me too. I'm going to a movie. Well, I don't know what to say. Uh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Gillsley, but there's a gentleman here to see you. Oh, great jumping jeeps. I forgot to put the car in the garage again last night. Uh, you hold him there, Bertie, while we sneak out to the back and drive away. But, gee whiz, Hump, George Washington never did a thing like that. George Washington never got a traffic ticket either, you know, right? <laughs> Come on. Uh, wait a minute, Mr. Gillsley. This ain't no police. Oh, he isn't? Oh, well, in that case, <laughs> I was only joking, Leroy, yeah. You were? Why, of course. I wouldn't do a thing like that on a legal holiday after George Washington's birthday, would I? Well, I wouldn't. <laughs> Bring the man in, Bertie. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, did he say who he was? He said he's from the city and about the drugstore and goes to find out how much everything in it is worth. Oh, wait a minute, Bertie. Don't let him in. He must be from the assessor's office. I can't see him now. But why not, Uncle Moore? He'll ask a lot of questions I don't feel right about answering with uh, certain people around here. <laughs> Bertie, you tell him that I've gone. Yes, sir. But, Uncle Moore, you told me yesterday that we should always tell the truth. Yeah, that's right, Leroy. But we are gone. We will be by the time Bertie gets to the front door. Come on, children. We're sneaking out the back way. <laughs> Take a look at you before we go in to meet Mrs. Twitchell, Uncle Mort. Now, don't be nervous. I'm not a bit nervous, Marjorie. Uh, maybe I'd better throw away my cigar. Uh, now, what did I do with that cigar? You threw it away. What? Oh, yes. Now, let's not get excited. Uh, how do I look, Marjorie? Oh, just fine. My, but you're a handsome man. Wait a minute, Marjorie. Remember what Uncle Mort said about telling the truth. <laughs> but I really think so, Leroy. Now, hold still, Uncle, while I pull the thread. Yeah. There. You're a slick-looking smoothie, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, you mean you are, my dear. Uh -huh. Honest, I never saw two more active members of the I'll Scratch Your Back if you'll do the same for me, society. <laughs> <laughs> How about saying something nice to me for a change? All right, Leroy. Goodbye and enjoy yourself at the movie. Okay, see you later. So long, Mark. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Well, maybe I'll be able to speak freely now. Ever since I talked against fibs and little white lies... Leroy has been an impediment in my speech. <laughs> well, let's go in now. And remember, just start to get into conversation with her casually and bring the subject of drugstores up in a very offhand manner. Oh, offhand, all right. <laughs> they say it's lucky that we're meeting her here in the Red Cross Center in case I have any trouble with the old battle axe. Oh, oh don't think of it. Come on in now. Yeah, all right. Uh, keep your fingers crossed, T.P. Oh, hello, Edie. Hi, Henrietta. Oh, I'll be hello. right there to help you, Ruth. Oh, Mrs. Twitchell. Oh, it's so nice seeing you again. Oh, how do, my dear? <laughs> well, goodbye, Uncle Mort. Thank you ever so much for bringing me down. Oh, by the way, you know Mrs. Salisbury Twitchell, don't you, Uncle Mort? Oh, uh, yes, of course. How are you this lovely morning, Mrs. Twitchell? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's a, it's a mighty curious thing, Mrs. Twitchell, but I, I just discovered that we're business rivals. <laughs> I suppose you're talking about my laundry. What are you doing, taking in washing? <laughs> no, 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 nothing like that. Just a drugstore. Oh, drugstore. Oh, yes, you know, a place where they sell postage stamps, sandwiches, and once in a while a bottle of fly spray. I am aware of drugstores, Mr. Gildersleeve. I just don't happen to remember that I own any. Well, well, think of that, Marjorie. Mrs. Twitchell has so many drugstores, she doesn't know she owns any. Oh, well, I think my uncle meant the city drug chain, Mrs. Twitchell. Oh, yes, that, I see. Uh, well, you... Excuse me, Uncle Mort, can I see you a second? You forgot to give me the dough for the show. Oh, well, just as soon as I'm finished, Leroy, as I was saying, Mrs. Twitchell, we have acquired the ownership of Quigg's Drugstore. And while it's not what you might call real competition at present, 
We're considering branching out, and we may soon give you a run for your money. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, yes. Uh, we've got plans to put a drugstore on every corner downtown. Unc, remember George Washington. George Washington? Uh, yes. We're going to call them the George Washington Drugstores. <laughs> oh, Uncle. Yes. However, Mrs. Twitchell, we might consider selling out since we have so many other interests. That is a very good idea, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, do you think so? Yes, indeed. I had so many other interests myself. I sold all my drugstores to a New York chain last month. Goodbye. Oh, this is one of my bad days. Yes, now maybe I'll get a little peace and quiet for a while. <laughs> then Leroy, he ain't with you, huh? No, he's gone to see a movie. I always enjoy the movie show Leroy sees. I can rest so nicely while he's there. <laughs> uh, excuse me for saying so, Mr. Gilfley, but you seem to be acting kind of skitterish lately. Uh, skitterish? Oh, you mean nervous. <laughs> well, yes, if you prefer your language without any flavor to it. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose I have been a bit jumpy. Leroy has been trying to make another George Washington out of me, and... I've been telling the truth until I'm red, white, and blue in the face. Well, what you need is a little rest. Yeah, that's right. And thank goodness you got rid of that tax assessor. Oh, but Mr. Gildersleeve... Can you imagine what a tax bill I'd have with Leroy around to gum up the works? <laughs> shh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Why should I shh, Mr. Gildersleeve? There's nothing to hear me here, is there? Yes, that supper man. He's right in the living room. The who? I couldn't get rid of him. Well, Oh, sometimes I'd like to be a hermit if I could find a nice warm cave. All right, Bertie, it isn't your fault. Well, well, I didn't know anybody was waiting for me. Uh, uh, how do you do, sir? Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, that's me. My name is Showers, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm from the city. Oh, yes, the maid told me. You want to get a valuation on that drugstore we own. That's right. I've been down there several times and never could catch you in, so I came out here. Hope you don't mind. Oh, not at all. Pay your taxes and help smash the axes. That's my slogan. <laughs> Suppose we go down to the drugstore now so you can get a small idea of what to assess us. <laughs> Have you got a car? Oh, yes, but I'm saving rubber, so I left it home. You think that's a good idea? Oh, splendid idea. In fact, I like it so much, I'm going to leave mine home, too. Come on, we'll walk. <laughs> I didn't realize it was so far down here. Uh, neither did I. Remind me to treat you to a corn plaster. <laughs> well, let's get started. Just haul out your notebook and shoot the questions to me. All right. Suppose we begin with those neon signs outside, the ones that read, Quigg's Open All Night Pharmacy. Uh, what do they work? Oh, about $25, $20, $15. Uh, for the both of them, of course. They look like they cost a lot more. Yeah, that's true. But they haven't much resale value. Where are you going to find anyone named Quiggs who is not only a druggist, but also stays up nights? <laughs> yeah. No, on second thought, I don't think they're worth more than $10. Uh, signs, uh, $10. Yeah. Now, inside, how about the soda fountain? That looks very nice and new. Oh, the seats are pretty worn. I'll show you what I mean. Young man, I wonder if you mind standing up a minute. So... Oh, Leroy, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm having a double nut chocolate sundae with whipped cream and a lemon phosphate to wash it down. Yeah. <laughs> What's the matter? Are you getting tired of banana splits? Yeah, I've had three of them already. You? Yeah. What are you and that man doing, Unc? Nothing that need concern you, my boy. Excuse the interruption, Mr. Showers. Uh, now, what were we saying? How long have you had that soda fountain? Oh, uh, quite a long time. Oh, not this one, Uncle Mort. Don't you remember? Uh, he paid $3,000 for it right after the first of the year. Uh, $3,000, eh? Yeah. Isn't it lucky I have my little nephew here to remind me? <laughs> Say, do you want me to help you in case you forget anything else, Unc? No, Leroy. Uh, why don't you have some more nice ice cream? Uh, you're a growing boy, and you need the vitamins. Well, thanks, but I'll have to wait a little while before I can eat any more. Uh, I'll just tag along with you. Oh, that'll be Ducky. Yeah, Donald Ducky. <laughs> uh, now, uh, what is your next question, Mr. Showers? How about these other fixtures? The cigar counter, the perfume displays, and uh, these glass cabinets. Oh, well, to tell the truth, they're new, too. Yes, to tell the truth. If the bill for them came to uh, $4,400. Well, that takes care of the fixtures. How about the merchandise? Have you got an inventory? What's an inventory, Unc? Something you invent? If, Leroy, please, I have enough headaches as it is. If an inventory is a list of all the things a drugstore has that are just as good as the things folks come in for that you're out of. <laughs> yes, I suppose you took one last month. I suppose we did. I'll have to ask the cashier. Oh, uh, Miss Capstaff? Yes? 
Oh, hello, Mr. Gildas, lady. A little nephew was just in here looking for you. Did you see him? Oh, of course you must have seen him, because here he is right beside you. Hello, Leroy. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, Miss Capstaff, would you please bring out the drug inventory we made last month? Yeah, and don't forget the one for cigars and candy and, and hardware and paint and powder, Uncle. Oh, yes, I was forgetting them, wasn't I? Bring them all here, Miss Capstaff. <laughs> all righty. I'll be right back. I know exactly where they are, either in a safe or filed away or behind the prescription counter. Yes, while we're waiting, don't forget to tell the man about the big refrigerator we have downstairs and that new dishwasher in the kitchen. Yeah, keep it up, Leroy, and you're going to be the new dishwasher in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, Mr. Showers, I'd forgotten about them. You see, they set us back somewhere in the neighborhood of... Uh... $837.21. Uh. Well, the boy has an uncanny knack for figures. He'll probably turn out to be an accountant when he grows up. If he grows up. <laughs> oh, well, here comes Miss Capstack, back with the inventories. Oh, here we are, Mr. Gildersleeve. I also found a list of all the merchandise we bought since the inventory was taken. Do you want that, too? Oh, yes, you might as well. Here you are, Mr. Showers. Is there anything else you'd like to know? There's a matter of goodwill and outstanding accounts. Oh, gee, we got a lot of goodwill on account of we got so many outstanding accounts. Yep. Leroy, that'll be all. Not another word out of you or... I won't say anything, Uncle. Uh, I, uh, I should judge that goodwill was worth about $1,500. Uh, $2,000. And our accounts receivable. Oh, I was talking to Mr. Fish, the bookkeeper, about them only yesterday, and he says that they amount to around 1000 and he thinks that uh, you... Thank you, Miss Capstaff. That'll be all. Oh, are you sure there's nothing else? No, Miss Capstaff, you've done enough. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, now, Mr. Showers, have you got all the information you want? Yes, according to my figures, the valuation on this property will run to about uh, 28500 Oh, 28500 jumping jelly beans. How much of a tax will we have to pay on that? <laughs> <laughs> I might as well confess, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm not the tax assessor. What? You're not? Then, then why, why did you say you were? I didn't. You just got that notion all by yourself. Huh? You see, I figured I could get a pretty low, honest valuation on this store if I let you go ahead assuming that I was. But then who are you? I'm an appraiser hired by the city drug chain. They're going to make you an offer to buy this place based on the figures I just got. Oh, gee, isn't that wonderful? Yes, my boy. I hope you've learned your lesson from this. Honesty always pays, Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. But right now, let me remind you, mothers and housewives, that these days call for energy. Every one of us is working harder than ever. That's why the energy-producing foods are so important. Foods like parquet margarine, made by Kraft. You see, parquet margarine is one of the best energy foods you can serve. It helps to refuel the body and replace energy used up in hard work or play. What's more, wholesome, nourishing parquet margarine is a dependable year-round source of vitamin A. Yes, every pound of parquet contains 9,000 units of this important vitamin. Now, of course, food value is mighty important, but flavor is important, too. Well, parquet margarine is outstanding on both scores. Yes, whether you use parquet margarine as a spread for bread, a flavor shortening for baking, or for pan frying, you'll find it has a luscious, tempting flavor your family's sure to like. Best of all, parquet margarine is economical. It can save you money every day. So why not try it? Kraft's delicious economical margarine called Parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Well, we certainly put that deal across, didn't I, Unc? Yes. Yes. Leroy, and now that all, all I have to worry about is where to invest that money again. Oh, no, you don't, Uncle Moore. I know just where it'll be safest and do the most good. Oh, where's that, Leroy? Good old United States defense bonds. Oh, I, of course. Uncle Sam can put to work every dollar we can spare. Hey, good night, folks. <laughs> with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Ooh.